Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. Good afternoon. I hope everybody's doing good today. So, a lot of people have been wanting me to talk about the Carly Russell case. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you guys know that we've been discussing it on there. We've been promoting it and everything else. But there's just been a lot of information coming out about this Carly Russell situation. That does not make any sense. So let me take you guys back to the beginning. Um, this was like around, I believe, July 14th. Um, basically, we had posted that an Alabama woman disappears after calling 911 to report a toddler walking alone by the highway. And so this is my comment that I wrote three days ago. I said, this is scary AF. Now we have to think twice about helping a child in need because we don't know if we may end up a victim. This is straight demonic. I pray this kind woman is okay. And there were many comments. People were praying for her. Um, the news was covering this. Her brother came out as well and pled for people, you know what I'm saying, to find his sister. So I'm going to play you guys both of these clips. Go ahead and check this out. We continue to stay on top of several late-breaking stories for you at this hour. I want you to take a good look at the photo on the left. Hoover police investigating a very strange disappearance. They are searching for Carlethia Russell. She goes by Carly. And investigators say that Carly vanished after reportedly seeing a toddler walking down I-459. It happened around 934 last night, just before the John Hawkins Parkway exit. That is near the target in Hoover. The police say she called 911 saying a toddler was walking down the side of the interstate. After calling police, she stopped to get the child and called a family member. Well, while on the phone, the family said things went quiet, but the line was still open. When police arrived, they found her car and belongings nearby, but no sign of her or the child. If you know anything, you are asked to call police. My sister Carly Russell is missing. My sister was traveling on I-459 after leaving work here in Hoover, Alabama. She spotted a toddler and she stopped to render aid as any decent human being with a heart would do. She contacted 911 as she's been taught and then she spoke with another one of our family members. My family member hears a scream and then my sister vanishes along with that toddler. Her car and belongings were all left at the scene. We have no idea where she is. This story is not getting the national coverage that it should, and we all know why, but you can help. Like, share, comment. My sister has been missing since July the 13th. There's a $25,000 reward for information that leads to the safe return of my sister Carly Russell. You can also contact 205-401-3365 if you have any information that can help. Again, my sister, our sister, deserves to be returned home safely. If you are a believer, you understand that we all are brothers and sisters in Christ. I hurt, she hurts, we all should hurt, and we all should help. Like, share, comment, so that we can get our sister, Carly Russell, back. After calling 911, the caller stopped to check on the child and also called a family member to report the same details. And when she got out the car, um, she did tell my daughter-in-law, I can't just leave. I can't just leave this little child on the side of the road. Russell's family says while on the phone, they heard her talking to the child, but they didn't hear the child respond. All right, so you guys just saw those clips. So for the past few days, 
Carly has been trending. This is all people have been talking about on social media. You know, a lot of people were just praying and hoping for this black woman's return. So then two to three days later after she went missing, all of a sudden, you know, she had been found alive. This is what I wrote on that clip. I said, I'm so happy she was found safe, but I need a full deep dive slash breakdown of what happened to her during the past 48 hours and what happened to the child that she was that she pulled over for. Was the child found as well? I'm not going to judge. I'm going to sit back and patiently wait for the details. This entire story is very chilling because I'm always looking out for kids. So this scares me. And I have. I mean, I've had kids approach me at Target and need rides. I've had kids, you know, just random kids ask me for money. Kids who don't know me from YouTube. I'm just, you know, a grown up like, ma'am, do you have a dollar, ma'am? Can You know, so I'm always like looking out for kids just because I would want somebody to look out for my own kids. And I remember all the adults who used to help me out when I was a kid. So this is definitely a frightening story. But then... You know, a lot of people were also kind of side-eyeing the story because of how she came back, and the family was automatically asking for privacy, and people were having a lot of questions. And then soon, the video footage from the highway came out as well, and on the video footage, there's no toddler on the side of the road. There's nobody pulling over, and even when Carly pulls over, she pulls over a bit further down. So there was this former FBI agent who was also speaking on the situation as well, along with other people who were having questions about this kidnapping. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this clip. And a lot to unpack in this story. So let's welcome now former FBI Special Agent Stuart Kaplan. Stuart, thank you so much for being here. Let's dive right in. Uh, Police say this is an ongoing investigation. What are they doing right now to either validate or invalidate her story? Well, I think certainly if you look at the physical evidence, and I would start obviously with the video evidence of the camera that picked up the car along the interstate, Certainly the camera or the video does not in any way show a toddler near or in any proximity to where she ultimately stopped. In fact, if you watch the video, she actually goes down the highway for a good distance before she finally comes to a stop. The first thing as an investigator, I think anybody could appreciate that if you saw a toddler in the middle of the night out there on an interstate, you would stop your car instantly and get out frantically and try to protect that child. Uh, The behavior of seeing the car continue down the highway, number one, is inconsistent with the belief that, in fact, there was a child along the road. Also, I think you would understand and appreciate and anticipate that other motorists would have made the same observations and would have called 911 or would have stopped their vehicles obviously to render uh, aid to this uh, child in in obviously grave danger. Uh, So those are the obvious uh, direct evidence that I would have a problem with. Uh, I I see this case, unfortunately, more as she may have been uh, involved with someone else and maybe in order to have an alibi uh, for where she was, I think we may see this case unravel uh, in the days to come. First, we want to get right out to WVTM 13's Maddie Davis. Now, Maddie, Carly Russell returned home last night, days after she vanished from the side of I-459 in Hoover. So what else do we know about her return? Well, Magdala, Hoover police tell us they received a call uh, that Carly had returned home to her house here in Hoover. However, those details uh, surrounding her uh, disappearance still remaining unclear this morning. And uh, police began investigating when she was reported missing Thursday night. And after that was after receiving a call from her saying she saw a toddler on the interstate. A search for her continuing through the weekend, but ending around 1045 last night when police got that call that Carly was home. Hoover PD responding to the scene to investigate fire medics also providing or arriving to assess Carly and transport her to the hospital. 
And what from what we uh, were last told, Carly remains in the hospital this morning. Her return to home ending a 48 hour search, grabbing national attention. Again, those uh, circumstances surrounding her disappearance still unclear this morning. We're hoping to he uh, hear from officials here with Hoover PD soon, but we will, of course, keep you updated on this. Live in Hoover this morning, I'm Maddie Davis, WVTM. All right, so you guys just watch those clips, the one of her being found and then the one of the FBI agent. So now the parents decide to come out and speak to NBC's Today Show. And so we posted this on social media and we watched this. And this entire situation left me with a lot more questions than answers. So I want you guys to watch the parents' interview right here. We turned out to a case we've been following. It's a strange one out of Alabama. Yeah, the parents of the woman who vanished for 48 hours after calling police to report a toddler walking alone down a highway. Well, they are speaking out in an exclusive interview. NBC's Pr Priscilla Thompson spoke with them. She joins us now. Hey, Priscilla, good morning. Ahoda, good morning. As questions around this case intensify, the family is urging the public not to speculate, saying that it's upsetting to Carly, and right now their focus is on her physical and mental well-being. That moment you all first laid eyes on her again, what was it like? To me, I mean, just so much joy. This morning, in an exclusive sit-down with NBC News, the parents of 25-year-old Carly Russell are speaking out, describing the moment their daughter appeared on their doorstep after being missing for more than 48 hours. What did you do when you saw her? We tried to hug her as best we could, but I had to stand back because she was not in a good state. So we had to stand back and let medical let professionals work with her. Um, but it's okay. Last Thursday, police say Carly called 911 to report a toddler walking alone on the interstate. She pulled over while on the phone with a family member who described hearing Carly scream. Her vehicle's unlocked, running. All her personal belongings you can set for her phone. On the scene, police found no sign of Carly or a child, and they say no children were reported as missing during that time period. The Russells waited in agony until Saturday night. There were actual, actually just so many calls and texts from people who maliciously lied to us. I just didn't know people could be so evil. Authorities have not indicated where Carly was during the 48 hours she was missing or what happened. Her parents declined to share what their daughter told them, citing the ongoing investigation. And can you tell me what happened Saturday night? Did you just get a knock at the door? Anything leading to, to the case itself, we, we can't discuss that. But they say speculation about the circumstances surrounding Carly's disappearance are only making things worse. She's having to deal with the trauma of people just making completely false allegations about her. Her family now urging the public to let the investigation play out, but mentioning an abductor. Her mother asking to read a brief message to the public. Um, Carly has given detectives her statement um, so that they can continue to pursue her abductor. Do you believe that there's an abductor still out there? Absolutely. Absolutely. NBC News has reached out to the Hoover Police Department to ask whether they're looking for an individual involved. Police have just said they're following up on all information provided by Carly. And when I talked to you all on Saturday, you also said your daughter is a fighter and she would find a way back to you. I felt that in my heart. Is that what happened? She did. She found her way back to us. However, we can't discuss the details of that. But they say one thing is clear. Do you believe she was fighting for her life? Oh, she definitely fought for her life. There were moments when she physically had to fight for her life, and there were moments when she had to mentally fight for her life. But she made it back to you. She, she made, made it back. back. Yeah, she did make it back. All right, Priscilla, so investigators are obviously busy on this case. What are they looking into going forward? 
Yeah, Hoda, right now they're analyzing that initial 911 call and also that traffic cam video showing that car driving on the interstate very slowly with its flashers on, believed to be Carly's car. And of course, they're looking at the evidence from the crime scene, including the car and her cell phone, which was found on the roadway nearby. Police say that they have been able to account for all of her steps leading up to her disappearance, but those 48 hours when she was gone still remain a mystery. Hoda? Mm. Yeah, leaving behind her phone, her pocketbook, and all those things, a lot of things that uh, investigators are looking into. Priscilla, mm. thank you. All right, so you guys just watched that clip. So this is what I wrote. I said, okay, I'm going to keep it real. First, I'm glad she's home, but her father's energy is shifty and weird. He definitely looks uncomfortable, and he can barely make eye contact with the camera. Second, I'm tired of people blaming social media for having questions about her disappearance. This was a viral story. People are questioning it, just like they did with the runaway bride and other white women who have lied about being kidnapped. So why, when people are having the same questions with this story, all of a sudden it's an issue and race is being brought into it? People are generally concerned because we need to know if people are being tricked by small children on the freeway by human traffickers. Shaking my head. So that's what I wrote. And as I went to go do more research, because, of course, she was trending all over uh, Twitter today, and a lot of people on Twitter are asking the same questions. Um, people are also making jokes of the situation, which I don't find funny. I find the situation just really crazy. Now, also on Twitter that's going viral, they're saying um, this girl called the prettiest. She's saying that the tea is piping hot in Birmingham. And they're saying that a lot of people in Birmingham are speaking about the situation. Um, this person called the prettiest. It looks like she's from Alabama. And um, she's in some type of Facebook group or she knows a bunch of people, you know, on Facebook who are talking about this story with Carly. And um, I mean, there's a lot of things going on here. I'm just going to read you guys some of the stuff that they posted. Um, this first post says, look at my page on live. Um, then she goes on to say she was at a public event yesterday. That's why she went home because Numerous people saw her. I'm going to see if I can find the page it was on. Her best friend said she was with a 17-year-old baby father at a hotel, but she promised her that she wouldn't tell anyone. I guess the friend got tired of lying and leading people on. Somebody else says, huh? Girl, she's grown as fuck. Why lie about that, though? I don't know. Probably somebody gave her some hush money or threatened her if she told so there's some type of rumor about her supposedly being with a 17-year-old at a hotel. I don't know. I'm just reporting what's going on on social media. So this other person says, Carly, we told you don't play with Birmingham. Out tricking off with your 17-year-old baby daddy and you 25. Please. This person wrote this. The captain of the Hoover Fire Department. She got caught stealing from work that day and failed out of nursing school and has been on drugs. She had her friend behind her, and that's who picked her up. She was with her friend all weekend. The police knew she was safe because she blocked her ex-boyfriend weeks ago, and she added him back when she was abducted. He caught the cops to tell them half a day before that she went back home. She had planned to disappear and realized that it wasn't going to work wild. Somebody else says, update, she's sticking to the she was abducted, Says she was lured into the woods by some people who live in the woods. Described as a person with orange hair, balding on top, and tied her up and drove her around. And put her in an 18-wheeler and fed her Cheez-Its for two days. And they painted her nails. They kept her on 150 somewhere. And somehow, she manages to get away and runs through the woods to her neighborhood until she gets to her house. Then goes to the hospital. Hoover got some ring doorbell footage from her neighborhood and it shows her walking casually until she gets close to her house. Then she starts sprinting and failing her arm and acting a fool. And then somebody else posted that Crime Stoppers is going to return the reward money collected for Carly Russell. But then I've also seen other posts where they said that Crime Stoppers is not going to return the money either. So there's all types of speculations. Don't even get me started on the boyfriend um, or now it's coming out that it's her ex-boyfriend. He came out a day ago speaking on the situation as well. So her ex, well, her boyfriend, but now they're saying it's her ex-boyfriend. He took to social media on Sunday and he wrote this. She was literally fighting for her life for 48 hours until she was physically and mentally stable again. She's not able to give any updates or whereabouts on her kidnapper at this moment. 
says Tamar, says Tamar Latrell Simmons. Um, all I ask from everyone right now is to be respectful of Carly's situation. So he's been not speaking, but then there were um, people who came out and said that he was cheating on her with a stripper. So this entire situation is a hot mess. Um, I've been trying to keep up with all of the mess on social media, but it's ridiculous that it's this many different stories, this much going around. Um, and it's almost like a joke at this point, like what really happened to her? And I think that the, and I think that people have the right to ask what happened, you know, because the community needs to be safe that there's somebody out there kidnapping people and using children as bait People need to know that. If this is a hoax, this is not a good look at all. What's not true, there's a lot of speculations. Um, I don't think the parents' interview helped either. Now, one thing I will say is that um, I don't like the fact that all of a sudden social media is being blamed for asking questions. Social media always asks questions. Social media is always going to investigate viral stories. This is no different than the case that happened back in 2005 um, with the woman... Her name was Jennifer Wilbanks, and they call her the missing bride. And basically, she faked her own kidnapping due to pressure from, you know, walking down the aisle. And a lot of people, once she was found, people did not believe her story. This was viral. Everybody was looking for her. Even though the husband at the time decided to forgive her, many people in her town were not as forgiving. So this is not an issue necessarily about black and white. People have always questioned when somebody is kidnapped and then they show up, people want to know what happened. And the decision on whether or not to file criminal charges against the so-called runaway bride. Tonight, the man who was to marry Jennifer Wilbanks says they will try it again. But many in her town aren't so quick to forgive. Here is NBC's Carrie Sanders. Police investigators made an afternoon visit to the lakefront home in Georgia where Jennifer Wilbanks is now in seclusion. Last seen publicly hiding under a blanket as she left New Mexico, the case of the runaway bride may now lead to criminal charges. The crime? False statements to police on a recorded phone line. And the person that did this to you was the he was man If she had called and said, I got scared, I'm coming home, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and never lied, we wouldn't all be standing here. The DA says Will Banks planned the getaway, buying her bus ticket under an assumed name a week before disappearing. Husband-to-be John Mason today said he's already forgiven Will Banks, slipped the engagement ring back on her finger, and still plans to marry her. But he's yet to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. If this seems a lot like a television soap opera, then the mayor of Duluth, Georgia, has this to add. She says the television show, A Current Affair, asked her to broker a $100,000 deal with the couple for an exclusive interview. That 100000 would be given to the city to cover the expense that, um, uh, that this was the figure that we think maybe uh, we spent on overtime and everything else for the employees. The mayor said no to the deal. A current affair says no comment. But one sign maker did comment on the whole affair. Case solved, cold feet. I don't think it's a case of, you know, people not wanting a black woman to have a fairy tale story. My thing is, this is a very serious situation. She said there was a toddler found. They, she pulled over to go rescue a toddler, then she was kidnapped. That is very frightening because, again, there is a such thing as human trafficking, and human trafficking, and human trafficking is very prevalent. And so people have the right to want to know the details. You know, I'm glad that she's home. I'm glad that she was not hurt. You know, we don't need another woman dead. But again, people want to know the facts of the details. They want to know the facts of the case. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And if it comes out that she lied, it's not going to be a good look. While resources were potentially wasted looking for her, there are so many other people who go missing every day who those resources could have been used for. So, yeah, I, I really want to know more details as to what happened. But it's really, really sad. And I feel bad because it seems like the parents were put in a, you know, in an awkward situation where they don't have anything to do with it, but they also want to defend and protect their daughter as well. So I leave the question up to you guys. What do you guys think happened? Do you believe that Carly Russell was really kidnapped? Do you feel like this was a hoax and she did this for attention? And how do you feel about the stories that are now starting to leak onto Facebook and social media 
that, you know, she potentially did this because she ran away with a 17-year-old. And there's all types of things going on out there. And what do you guys think about the potential stories that are coming out that she possibly faked her kidnapping? So, again, I don't have all the answers. You know, I'm really waiting for the police to come out and, you know, put everything out there as to what happened. But I also don't like this narrative that all of a sudden social media is wrong for asking questions when the brother and the family came to social media to get everybody on social media to make the story go viral, which social media did. Social media did the damn thing, getting this story told by the mainstream media. But now, you know, people are shaming the same folks that were asked to help make the story go viral. That makes no sense to me. But again, I look forward to reading y'all's questions and comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this entire story. Don't forget to like the video, feel free to share, and I will talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.